Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to talk about sugar transport. I'm going to very briefly talk about how sugars are broken down, but I'm going to spend most of the time talking about the transporters that move these sugar molecules across the plasma membranes of cells. But uh, before I do, I just want to point out uh, the email here, profroofs at gmail.com, and this newly developed website, www.profroofs.com. Okay, here's the site. I just started working on it, but I'm trying to improve it. It's the uh, home page right here. You can go up top. There's videos. They're organized by categories, cardiovascular, respiratory, pH, all that. Uh, a little bit about me. If you want, you can request your own video for me to work on. Contact me. Any questions or comments. And hopefully, I uh, can support some of the development going on here. Uh, there's a... Uh, donate button down here it'll just help me out as I'm going here through school I'm starting a Facebook page hopefully you can help out with that maybe we can discuss some things whatever questions you have on there and also please make sure to subscribe to me on YouTube you can search the site as well and leave a reply okay so let's get back to the video eh, I don't know if I want to continue with this video I keep looking at this picture of this malt right here it makes me want to stop this video and go get one but anyways, maybe after the video. All right, so here we go. So let's very briefly discuss sugars. We have disaccharides. How many is di? Di is two. And then we have monosaccharides. Mono is one. So let's see here. The disaccharides we'll talk about, sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Di, they're two. They're two what? They're two monosaccharides. The monosaccharides are glucose and fructose. Those two make up sucrose. Maltose is made up by glucose and glucose, both joined together. And lactose is made up by glucose and galactose. It's because this is a 1,4 bond, this is a 1,4 bond, this is a 1,2 bond, but we're not gonna get into that now. Okay, so when you first hear this, you're probably like, damn, how am I gonna remember what's what? They all end in os, okay, that's sugar. So let's try to find some common things and make a way to remember it. Okay, if I asked you to name me a sugar, you're probably going to say glucose, right? Well, there's a reason. Glucose is in every one of these disaccharides. It's very common. So the question then becomes how to remember what are the other sugars that make these up. So I tried to come up with some ways, and uh, I don't know if it'll help you, but we'll see. Okay, so to remember the disaccharides, I came up with the mnemonic small. You take the S, you take the M, A, L, and you take that last L, and then you're going to get small there, right? Sucrose, maltose, lactose. Those are your disaccharides. If you're having a problem remembering whether small refers to disaccharides or monosaccharides, maybe you could put di small. You know, die small, not die big. Yeah, I know you're laughing. Anyways, once you get that out of the way, it's, well, what are the other monosaccharides that go along here? Okay, let me skip to maltose. Now you see why I have a picture of that soda malt right here. Right? It's soda malt, you think it's very sugary. It has lots of sugar. So it has lots of glucose. So maltose is two glucoses. The only thing I could come up here with sucrose, and I'm sure you can come up with better, is the S in sucrose, the F and fructose that makes San Francisco. I'm not from San Francisco, but my buddy George here is. This is us at the USA versus Antigua. It's the quarterfinals for the World Cup here in Antigua. That was a fun game. Anyways, he loves the team and they just won the World Series, so I figured I'd put them in here. So sucrose contains fructose. And then when you go to lactose, well, the whole name, lactose, is in there, right? Lactose. I was just saying lac, lac, lactose, galactose. All you're doing is just adding the GA in front of it. So I could have underlined the whole thing. Regardless, this is the way to remember your disaccharides from your monosaccharides. So let's continue. So now let's discuss glucose transporters. There are two classes of glucose transporters. They're the glutes that we're going to discuss first that you see here. And there are the S glutes, which we'll discuss next. Now, with the glutes, there are about 14 different isomers of them. We're going to discuss six. You see the first five here, and the next one we're going to discuss is number seven. So let's get started. Glute one, 
how do I remember glute one? I take this little quote and I say every one B number one. This has two meanings. Every one is because this transporter is located throughout many cells in the body. What, what's the most important thing? Maybe you can just remember this part right here, B number one, because you'll find this in the red blood cell. What's another name for the red blood cell? Another name is an erythrocyte. You see there's a B there. And then also, and I apologize for writing crooked, the B, B, B. That is what? That is the blood brain barrier that separates blood from mixing with CSF. So if you notice, there are a bunch of B's throughout here. So B, number one. Why are these more important than the rest of the cells? So the rest of the cells in the body, many of them have GLUT1, is because here is where you find them most numerous. Or there may not be other types of transporters. For example, the kidney has several different types of GLUT transporters. Uh, the liver as well too, so other tissues have other types, but these two here primarily, if not solely, rely just on GLUT1. GLUT2. I'm sure there's more than four places, but I'm just going to mention four places. And I'm going to use this mnemonic right here. You see, there's two kids, right? One, two. They're both eating pancakes. What organ starts with pan? Pancreas. So kids, what organ starts with kid? And there's two of them, kidneys, right? Two kidneys. They're eating two pancakes. Where are these pancakes going? They're going inside them, inside their intestines. So two in, right? Two in for intestines, pan for pancreas, kid for kidneys. And why are they going in? So they can live, to live. What letter am I missing here for an organ? Just the R. So two kids, two pancakes, two inside to live, right? So this would be intestine, this would be pancreas, and this would be kidney. Two kids, two pancakes, two in to live. I'll just notice I forgot to put the quotes there to end. Okay, let's move on to glute three. The best I could do with three is I wrote the number three and then I close that up here and then I drew this and then I added some dendrites ah, if I write dendrites what does that make this makes it an axon so what type of cell this is this is a neuron so glute 3 you're gonna find in neurons so I don't know how great of a drawing that is but hopefully you can just make a 3 connect it there's a soma there's axon the dendrites uh, you find GLUT3 mostly in the dendrites and the axon more than in the soma than in the cell body. Okay, let's move to GLUT4. If you get a test question and you see all these choices, GLUT1 through 5 and whatever, you have no clue, just guess GLUT4. That's the one everybody wants you to know. And you'll see why in a moment. Alright, so GLUT4, it's different than all the other ones. So this is the way I'm trying to remember it. It is for... Rin. Why am I saying foreign? Uh, it sounds like the word foreign. Okay. Foreign. For in. What hormone starts with in? We complete that. Insulin. So glute 4 requires insulin. It's foreign. The other ones do not require insulin. So where are uh, we going to find these transporters? We're going to find them in muscle, in myocytes, and adipocytes. Where are adipocytes? Adipocyte is a what cell? It's a fat cell. That is fat cell. So you can use that mnemonic or whatever here, foreign, to think it's different, for in insulin dependent. Uh, but how do you remember that it is located in muscle and uh, fat cells? Well, this is going a little bit of a stretch, but you know, if you get a person here, I'm trying to draw the body, forget the head and all that stuff, that's arms, 
I know I'm a great artist. Oh, that's not great. You know, usually people want to go for a six pack or whatever, but they're stuck at a four pack, right? Four pack. That's where we're getting four because it's a fight between muscle and fat, right? Do we have muscle or do we see fat? Well, I put an E in fat. We're going to scribble that out. So muscle versus fat. So GLUT4, think foreign, for in. They're insulin dependent. And think of a four pack. So muscle versus fat. You can either get a four pack of muscle or a four pack of beer, which is going to give you fat. Glute 5. This is what I came up with for glute 5. If you try to draw a hand, that is a thumb, it's index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and the pinky. What a lovely hand. A little deformed. Anyways, so this frog looking hand or whatever, how many fingers are we supposed to have? One, two, three, four, five. What cell, when you look at it, has these things or what do we call these things here that look like fingers these stuff up on the top we call them micro villi so glute 5 you're gonna find here on the micro villi on the luminal side this is where it'll be coming in on inside your intestines to be absorbed into your bloodstream to go this way so it's gonna be coming this way now I use purple because up top we use purple for fructose. All right, so fructose, F, five. All right, we have five fingers, one, two, three, four, five. And F for fingers. So fructose, five fingers. So GLUT5 it is primarily transporting fructose, although it does transport glucose and galactose, it transports fructose with a higher affinity, where in the intestines from the luminal side. So again, just think five fingers, the fingers look like villi, FFF, fructose, five fingers, that's where you'll find your GLUT5. So I just pulled up this picture, you see five fingers, you see five rings, you see a little yellow. If you're a basketball fan, you'll notice this is the hand of... Kobe Bryant. You can see his broken finger from 2009. I think it was against the T-Wolves. Anyways, next time you see all the rings here on Kobe, which glute transporters will you think of these rings are? They are glute 5. So glute 5, you'll find those in the intestines. I was going to use uh, Jordan's hand here, but he has six rings, so that wasn't going to work. So just to summarize, GLUT1, red blood cells and blood brain barrier. GLUT2, kidneys, pancreas, intestines, and liver. GLUT3, neurons. 4, very, very special because insulin. Insulin, well, what disease is this going to be important for? Obviously, diabetes. Muscle and adipocytes, adipocytes, fat cells. And GLUT5, you'll find those in the intestines on the microvilli, which are on the luminal side of the cell. Now I almost forgot this last transporter, GLUT7, even though there are 14, but this one's important as well too. And my buddy here, Joe, he's the one who reminded me of GLUT7, so I told him I'd give him a little shout out here. So I met Joe here in med school, so apparently I guess I'm lucky because he's reminding me to tell you guys about this, so lucky to meet Joe. I just took lucky sevens, I mean... You know, yeah, I need the seven somehow, so there's a seven, lucky sevens. Plus, I love these scratch-offs. But the question is, am I really lucky to hang out with Joe? Well, look what happens when I hang out with Joe. Too much of this, I'm going to end up with pancreatitis, going to end up with uh, hepatomegaly, portal hypertension, and I'll make myself a trip to the ER to the emergency room. Well, what organelle in the cell is represented by ER? None other than the endoplasmic reticulum. Reticulum. So GLUT7, you find that in the endoplasmic reticulum. 
And you guys don't have to use Joe. I'm sure you can think of uh, another friend. You can just call Lucky7 and that's sending you right to the ER. Now let's change gears a little bit and let's talk about the sodium dependent glucose transporters. And then after these two we'll do some review questions and we'll be done. So same thing except uh, we're taking the U out and we're putting an S at the beginning. The S is because sodium. The transport of glucose is dependent upon sodium. Now this type of transporter was discovered by a guy named Robert Kellogg, like the cereals crane. He was American. He's actually from Jersey as you can see here. I think Burlington County. He lived through most of the 20th century. He died two Halloweens ago from when I made this video. Lived a long and healthy life. He fought in World War II. He got a PhD. He went to Harvard. He was all over the place teaching in med schools. And he saved the lives of thousands of people, which I will discuss here, both probably while being in the Navy and uh, medically. This guy accomplished quite a lot. So first, where do we find s glut one Well, just think you got one very long, what, intestine. And if you remember, we have these cells here. And these cells have these little finger things. What are these little finger things called? Microvilli. Now, what glute transporter transported on the microvilli that we just looked at? Well, if we go back up here and look, a right, couple up here, it's glute 5. But what did it transport? It transported fructose. It didn't transport glucose and galactose. I mean, it does, but not with a very high affinity or transport rate. So, how do glucose and galactose get through here uh, much better? Well, I'm going to blow up this cell right here, make it a little bit larger. So we got our microvilli, and we got S glue 1. Let's take the green, and let's just draw one of these transporters right here. So how does S glue 1 work? Well, before I discuss that, let's go down here to the basal lateral side. You remember the sodium potassium pump? What gets pumped out of the cell? It's sodiums, right? Three NAs. And what gets pumped in? How many? Two potassiums. So we are removing the sodiums from here. So that means we're making more room inside for more sodiums to come in. So what's going to happen is sodium is going to come in, it's going to continue this way, and it's going to come out. So what's going to come along with it? Well, glucose. Glucose is going to come in with it here. So how is glucose going to leave? Well, I'm just going to draw this cross over here. This one doesn't require any sodium. Do you remember what glue is in here in the intestine? Do you remember that picture with the kids? What did we say about the kids? We said two kids, two pancakes to in to live right to in to intestines so this is saying glue 2 is here on the basal lateral side and just so you see the difference so you don't think it's the exact same thing I'll make this half brown as well too and that just fully green just for glucose and we call this a sim porter. Sometimes you'll see sim like this just for simultaneous but this is also a type of co-transporter meaning they're coming in together. If they were going in opposite directions that would be called what? That would be called an anti-porter. A-N-T-I. So Mr. Robert Crane here, I should say Dr. Robert Crane, was the first to discover a transporter that brought in more than one thing together, a co-transporter. So this s glue transporter is this co or sim porter right here. So how did he save lives? Well, if you look at the scanning electron microscope of this bacteria, this bacteria is Vibrio cholera, and when somebody and just that, it goes through the acetic contents of the stomach, makes its way 
and it travels into the intestines and then it attaches here and it prevents the reabsorption of sodium but a mechanism that involves sodium and chloride but it does not affect the s glute one transporter so he realized if people consumed a large concentration of a salt and sugar drink as you notice here the salt being potassium and the sugar being glucose it would help to reabsorb more why was this bad why did it cause diarrhea uh, vibrio cholera is because it would prevent the reabsorption so you're going to end up with hyper osmolarity in the lumen which means water would passively flow into there and then you would just have a lot of water and have diarrhea but he prevented this by allowing more solutes to come out and therefore more water to come out so in summary Robert Crane was a great man S glute 1 you can find in the intestines you can find in other parts of the body as well as the kidney but primarily we'll just go with the intestine so think one long intestine S glute 2 same idea but where do you really want to think about it? Well, we have two of these organs. And I know I'm a horrible drawer, but just go with it. These are kidneys. So two kidneys, one intestine, S glute one in the intestine, S glute two, two kidneys. If you really want to know, they're primarily in the beginning before we go down this loop and continue. So this part is called what? It's the proximal convoluted tubule. You can also find S glute 1 in here, but primarily looking at S glute 2. One last word before we do some questions here. There are primary and secondary active transport mechanisms. The sodium potassium pump is a primary type of active because it utilizes, what am I going to write here? It utilizes ATP directly. So that's primarily using ATP. This type is not primary, but it is secondary because it couples the action of this pump here and uses that gradient to pull in the glucose with it. So ATP is not used directly here, it's used here, but that sodium gradient is generating help to pull in uh, another sodium will bring the glucose with it. So that's secondary active transport and this is primary because it's primarily using ATP. So let's move on and do some questions. Okay, so with these questions here, I'm going to read them and you can pause them and try to answer them. Which type of glucose transporter is insulin dependent? It's going to affect our diabetics. Well, what do we say? We have one, two, three, four, five, and seven. Well, the way we remember this is we took four, we said foreign, it's different, and that's where we're getting our insulin so that's going to be glute 4 let's go to the second one which type of glucose transporter is mainly found in the intestines and requires secondary active transport well we just did it anything that has secondary active transport well it's not going to be the glutes so we can cancel those out so it's got to be one of these and what do we say about the intestine we said one very long intestine so one very long intestine that's going to be s glute one so that's all i have for this video thank you for your time remember if you have questions email me at profroofs at gmail.com or go to my website www.profroofs.com you will find this video under videos and digestive system you can request a video just fill out this form, put your name in and what you want to see. Make sure to join on Facebook and subscribe. Also, if you can, help support development and go to the PayPal and donate whatever you can generously afford. And as I'm saying here, you know, just buy me a drink. But seriously, more importantly, I'll be able to help you guys out better. So go, enjoy your malts, live long and happy lives, have that malt. What does malt have again? Malt has glucose and it's very sweet, it's very sugary to glucose molecules. Take care.